Hello! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and this is another episode of the Taylor Talks Crochet Podcast. It has been so long since I filmed a podcast. I had to go back in my notes and see what I actually talked about in my last podcast. So much has been going on and I actually got hit with a really bad cold over like Memorial Day and it is June 18th when I'm filming this and I am still kind of like recovering from that. I could not do anything for almost two weeks and then I had like a really important work trip and so it has been crazy. So because it has been so long, I have a ton to share with you guys today. We have a lot of finished products, projects, <laughs> but we also have a lot of new whips that I'm really excited to share with you and one hook acquisition that I can show you now. So Ofire Co. did a collaboration with Refined Vibes. She is a really big creator on both YouTube and really big on Instagram and 10% of the profits from this went to the Embracing Project in Las Vegas to that helps youth from sexual exploitation, which I think is really, really cool. And the minute I saw that, I was like, okay, well, I already know that I need to get a hook from this. And they already made the donation. Unfortunately, they are sold out, but there are still some yarn bowls available that are like this striking color as well. So I'm going to show you this. It is this striking purple color. Like you just hold it in your hands and it glows. Do you see that in the light here? Like it is probably the most beautiful hook I've ever seen. So it is this purple color, but if you look at it straight on, it, it's this like translucent blue at the same time. I don't know how, but I am obsessed with it and I love it so, so, so much. So that's my one hook acquisition. And then Ofire Co. it did just post like a sneak peek today. And it's not fair because she did it in black and white of a new summer hook. And I hope that she shows us tomorrow because I, she posted a thing about uh, a hook called like Firecracker. And I needed that yesterday and I need this one tomorrow. Like, uh. I just love these hooks so much. Anyway, enough rambling on that. Let's hop into some of the finished projects. We have a lot going on. I have a blanket, some summer, summery things, and a couple cardigans. So yeah. First thing I'm gonna show you is this tulip hat. Isn't this so cute? Oh, it's so cute in this lavender color. So this is a pattern I bought off of Etsy. It's called the Lily Flower Bucket Hat from Wonderland Patterns. And they are also under Wonderland Patterns on Etsy, which like I said, where I bought this from. I have made a couple of these and I plan on making a few more in mostly cotton yarn, just because I think that that's most conducive to a hat, like a summery hat like this. But I think this is so cute if you were to do like a Ren Fair or something. It is a little bit big. If you look at it on my head, you're like, oh, honey, your head looks a little like swallowed up by that. So I crocheted this with a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, but I also did it with an O Fire hook. And if you can tell on these, they have a like this big taper. And when I use these, I really like hike my stitches up that taper. So they tend to be a little bit looser. That's, that's a me thing. Um, so I, to do the cotton ones, I've been using a hook that, uh, like a Clover Amore hook. But I mean, I still like this and I don't feel like it really impacts my wearing of it all that much. She a little big, but she's still cute though. <laughs> so that's the first thing that I have finished and I've been making quite a few more of these. I love this lilac color too, it's just so pretty. This is with Big Twist yarn, and I believe this green is as well, but I don't remember because it was just something that was in my stash. Because your girl has been doing so good using up my, I've been doing so good using up my stash yarn. I still have a lot, but we're doing good. <laughs> 
Next thing is this wave blanket. So I did finally finish it. I'm pretty sure this was the one that I was talking about in my last podcast episode. So this is my, this is using Karen cinnamon swirl cakes in the colorway heat wave. So yeah, this uh, is finally done. I crocheted this with a, it's either a six or a six and a half millimeter crochet hook. When you're doing these waves, it's really nice to crochet with a little bit of a bigger hook because they the waves tend to like bunch up which you're gonna see when I show you another wave project that I've been working on recently so yeah this one's done I don't have much more to say on that because I feel like I've been talking about it forever and then the next few things are actually using some granny squares I know I've been talking about how much I have been making these recently but I haven't been making projects out of them. I've just been making the squares and being like, that's a project. <laughs> Ends not woven in nothing. <laughs> so I actually made this bucket hat and I've made quite a few of them. And a tutorial just went live on my channel um, this past weekend on how to make this with five granny squares. Super easy. It takes, I don't know, it takes me about less than an hour to make it. So just a very fun, little thing and this has been perfect when it has been kind of sunny here I can wear this down to the pool and it completely covers my whole face because if there's one thing I don't want it's my face burning so that has been the other hat that I've just been obsessed with recently and then I did I made a big project with these squares but this is like a little project I did with some of the leftovers and I've actually been using it a lot. This is just a little purse I made with three of the granny squares. Um, I believe this was like lily pad Erin. Oh, and this one is soft white hot stuff, I think. But yeah, so this is just a little purse thing. I've just been throwing my keys and my wallet in there and I really haven't had any problems with it stretching too much, but I also only put my phone, my keys, and my wallet in there. So, yeah, not too much to say on there. I'm sure if you wanted to, you could put a Kindle in there, but like I said, I've just been kind of using it as a grab and grow purse. The big project that I used with those granny squares, though, I made this beautiful granny square cardigan. And I'm so happy and like so proud of myself it's gonna look a little weird with this over it. So here's kind of what it looks like. This is unlike anything that I have made before. I am so happy with how this turned out. Let me do a little 360 for you. It almost gives like old lady coat vibes, I think. And the sleeves are a little long, so I did cuff them here. They're not sewn that way though. So I can make them long again. Did five squares across the back. And then for the front panels, I just did two and two. So then you have that extra row to kind of accommodate for your neck, I guess. And the fact that like we are not just like flat beings, I guess. I'm a 3D person. Um, and then for the sleeves, I know a lot of people when I looked up how other people made the like granny square cardigans they would only use two squares for their sleeves but your girl kind of got big arms like i'm strong so i had to do three so we have one two and then three there and so that was kind of a modifier that i had to do just because all of the squares are the same size and i didn't really want to try and deal with uh, making extra rows on any of the squares and making them bigger in any sort of way. So let me know if you want a tutorial on how I made this. It was relatively easy once I had all of the squares and I feel like if you were to try and you know change it for different sizes I don't think it would be all that difficult. But yeah so I made a cardigan with these granny squares and I'm just like super happy with it. It is a bit thick and heavy so I'm thinking it's going to be more like a transitional piece more fall and spring you know so 
Yep. Next is another summary item that I'm super, super excited about. So I watch a lot of Passionate Kelsey's like studio vlogs and she's been doing this really cool series where she makes a bunch of products all in the same color. And so she found this tutorial for like a super cropped like t-shirt raglan. But, and so she's been making a lot of those on her channel and then she linked the tutorial. So I went to the tutorial and I <laughs> made one of the t-shirts. It's not super cropped on me though. I made an extra large and it kind of fits like an off the shoulder t-shirt and it does go just past my belly button, I would say. And this is using Karen Coconut Cakes in the colorway Tutti Frutti. Sorry if the lighting's a little funky in here. The weather, not the weather in Rapid right now, not great. Um, I want it to be sunny so bad, but it's super cloudy. It's not even that warm out today. It is 68 degrees right now. What? Why? That's not cool. Next is this ruffly skirt. So this is using um, my own sort of pattern. It needs to be steamed so that some of these ruffles will relax. This is with Lion Brand Respun in the colorway Rose, I wanna say. It's either called Rose or Blush. And I crocheted this with a six millimeter crochet hook and I would not recommend doing that again for this yarn in particular. It definitely needed something that something smaller it came off way more as a weight three than a weight four yarn it works just fine as a skirt i really really like it i wore it out to dinner the other the other night and it worked fine i do want to make a tutorial for this but i need to workshop it just a little bit more before i do that so it would probably it'll probably be a little bit before that comes out unfortunately next is something i'm kind of on the fence about um i love it because i made it and i'm really like proud of myself but at the same time it's just not working the way that it's supposed to so i made this ballet top type of thing right it's beautiful it's wonderful i love this colorway this is using big twist rainbow bright and i used a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and this is just using the mesh stitch and i think that this turned out really good but it doesn't sit over my tatas quite nice so when i put it on it basically is like kind of up here when i need it to be here so i don't know if maybe like a good wash would help relax the stitches or anything, but it's a mesh stitch. So it's already like a pretty relaxed stitch. So I don't know. I think I'm just gonna have to like wear it out one night and get it all sweaty and gross. And then maybe it'll finally figure itself out. I did kind of just freehand this based on the other one that I had made myself in the past. I have a white one like this that is too big for me around the back and through you know, like the boob triangle area here. It's too big. I don't know what I did wrong, but it's still cute and I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm sure you'll see this in some summer outfits. There's that, and then we have one more finished object. The second blanket cardigan is finally finished. The tutorial has finally been filmed. So that's gonna be coming out within the next week here. So stay tuned for that. I know that it is not hexagon cardigan weather, but Everyone always needs something to cuddle up with at a bonfire, and honestly, I think this is going to be the perfect item for that. So I'm so excited to be able to share that with you guys. Yeah, I'm just so happy that this is done. This has been staring me in the face for months. I used an eight millimeter crochet hook and you know, just did a few extra things. It really is just a hexagon cardigan, extra big and with a few modifiers. So go check that out when it comes out. Whew, it is like so hot in this room right now. So 
I mentioned on one of my recent videos that my and my best friend's third roommate moved out. So now we just have kind of this open space. I've kind of been working out in here a little bit and then I've co-opted at least a little bit of the room for my crochet stuff. And I think that this could be a really nice filming space. The only problem is, is that it's pretty echoey. When I filmed my bucket hat tutorial, the granny square bucket hat recently, it didn't come off super echoey. So we'll see how this comes out in the editing process, but let's, let's move on to whips because I have a lot of them. So first thing is a wave stitch blanket. I've decided that I'm going to be making blankets for a lot of my family members this year for Christmas. And I know that it's not even July yet, but if I want to make like four or five blankets for Christmas, I need to start now because I get so distracted and off task with things. So this one is a wave stitch blanket for my brother. This is using the Karen Jumbo in the colorway country basket. So it's just this repeating blue, green, and brown, and white. My family is really big into 4-H and my brother's a boy scout and honestly this just kind of gives boy vibes. A girl could have it too, but like for my brother, it's perfect for him. I'm crocheting this with a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and as you can tell it just kind of has this nice drape to it as a blanket. Uh, I'm going to be using about five skeins of that yarn for that blanket and I do think that that'll be enough. He's around six foot now. They grow up so fast because he's my younger brother. <laughs> Next is a pretty big, I didn't realize how big this was. This is a scrap blanket. So I know that these kind of aren't as popular as they used to be, but I just have a lot of yarn and I didn't know what to do with it. And I really do think that these blankets are kind of nice to just kind of throw in your car because I live in the Midwest and our biggest fear is getting stranded in the middle of a snowstorm. Has that ever happened to me? No, but it could. Therefore, having a blanket in your car is so crucial, just in case. But this is just using different little pieces of scraps in my yarn stash, like the scraps that are pretty big, you know? Like this is a pretty big swathy yellow and you know, all this sort of stuff. I'm trying to go for like a dark yellow, yellowy kind of theme here as you can tell. I'm crocheting this with a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and this is pretty long. It's probably gonna be pretty big too and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it once it's done because I already have a car blanket but I'm sure I can find someone who needs a car blanket. Speaking of car blankets that's what the next project is too. So I went on Pinterest as you do and I found a bunch of these double-stranded granny squares and I just thought they were super cool. Well, somebody else posted them. I thought they were super cool, so I decided to make some. And I've started weaving in the ends of them now. But I figured this would be a really nice, big and thick kind of camping blanket. And it was a good way for me to use up quite a few skeins of yarn that I just did not know what to do with. So I paired yarns together based off of popular like college sports team like color combos. So we have like a maroon and yellow for like the University of Minnesota, navy blue and yellow or gold, what have you. That would be like a University of Michigan, I think. Uh, we have orange and black, which is like just standard. I mean, I went when I went to high school, our colors were orange and black, so there's that. And as you can see, I've woven in quite a few of these ends already. And then I have a bunch that don't have the ends woven in. Uh, so we have yellow and black, which the only one I can think of for whatever reason is like, you know, University of Wisconsin Superior. <laughs> So yeah, black and yellow, and then we have black and red, so like University of Wisconsin-Madison. And then we have blue and yellow, which is kind of like the SDSU Jackrabbits. So I don't know how many of these I have. I have a lot of them. And I plan on stitching them together and it's going to be kind of like, it's gonna be a car slash camping blanket. <laughs> that, that's what it is. So, as I said before, I don't think I need these blankets, but somebody in my life, I'm sure, will. And the nice thing about, you know, just using up these acrylic pieces in my 
from my yarn stash is um, one, they're gone, but two, if I'm giving someone an acrylic blanket, that's an easy to care for blanket. I really don't recommend using anything else for blanket making. So those were the two big projects that I've been working on, or three, the three big projects I've been working on. So now we're gonna get into a little bit of the smaller stuff. This first thing is the second panel of what's going to be a hexagon cardigan. I have the first panel right over here. So as you can tell, I've already sewn up or stitched together one side and made my short rows. And so just wanna finish the second one. I am so close to finishing it. And then I get to be done. That is using Lion Brand Mandela Bonus Bundle in the colorway Spirit. I'm using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. If you buy two of these and just like use a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, it is the perfect amount of yarn to make your two panels for a hexagon cardigan. This next thing is only a whip because I'm stupid. So when I was trying to make the blanket cardigan, I whipped up the first panel so fast. And so I went to start the second panel. And what do you see that's wrong with this? This is supposed to be the second panel. What's wrong with this? It's not a hexagon, it's a square. So, <laughs> this is going to be kind of like my Easter egg sweater dress thing that I made earlier in the year. I'm going to finish the rows here and I have quite a bit of leftover yarn from the blanket cardigan in these different colors that I think is going to create like a really fun little forest sweater dress thing. So, yeah, I mean this is mostly done. This is going to be with an 8mm crochet hook again but I just need to start working on it. And that was, this was the reason why the blanket cardigan took so long to make because I felt so stupid after this happened. <laughs> Next is kind of something I'm trying to workshop, another sweater. Uh, it's going to be a wave stitch sweater. Okay, I'm not sure where I think the camera cut out. My battery died, which has not ever happened to me before. Also the camera started overheating because we're in the sun right now, so I had to change the camera angle a little bit so it's not quite in direct sunlight here. So this project is going to be a wave stitch sweater. It's going to be quite big, a sort of like drop shoulder type of thing. Um, I have my front and back panels here, but I want to figure out... I need to do some rows up top here to kind of even out it to like make it straight so that I can like sew them together and then make the sleeves. So that's the next sort of step with these. I'm using my new O-Fire hook in a five millimeter, but as you can see, actually I don't know if you can tell, but like I can tell with the waves, it just like bunches a little bit more, which is why I recommend sizing up if you're going to do a wave stitch. But I think this will block out just fine. This is using Karen Cakes, just the original cakes. So it uses a 20% wool, 80% acrylic blend. And so it's super soft and it's been really nice to work with. It is kind of heavy and hot to be working with wool right now. So I don't entirely love that. So we'll see where we fall on, you know, working with that. And then the last two things are in the very like early kind of stages of being made. So first, this is another one of those top-down shirts like I showed you earlier. This is using the Karen Cakes coconut cakes in the, I can't remember the colorway. I think it was called like jam, like jelly or something. <laughs> It reminds me of a bomb pop and I want to make this second one so that I can wear it on the 4th of July. So I'm using a 5mm crochet hook and I'm using the tutorial and I'm just setting up the raglan round and doing like my first increases right now. I literally just started this last night so really 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 not far on that one. And then the last thing is this book sleeve. The pattern is by LTK Cuties because I was feeling like doing some puff stitches today. So yeah, I have only made Kindle sleeves. So this is the first book sleeve. So it'll be interesting to see when I'm done, like how big of a book it can fit. I think I'm probably only just over a third of the way done. 
because I mean it's gonna have to be pretty tall but I'm trying to use up some yarn so this is using the same stuff as that like tie that like tie top that mesh one uh, so this is big twist rainbow bright and I yeah, just want to kind of use it up and then also make some of these for the pride market that's coming up. And I'm thinking that maybe, depending on what I end up doing this weekend, I might do like a how many like Kindle or book sleeves can I make in a day? And that would be kind of a really good thing to have on the table at the market because a lot of people do read out here like it's crazy i feel like i've met more readers out here than anywhere else ever so that's pretty cool that is everything i have to show you guys today thank you so much for joining me i know this was a long one hopefully you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like on this video comment down below what kinds of projects you're working on right now and subscribe to the channel for more content like this i am wanting to start getting into like crochet studio vlogs. I don't really have a studio, but more on, you know, my making process and the way in which I like go about things and just kind of like talking to you guys more. I really had a good that good time making my like cozy cabin vlog. It ended up being really long, but I really had a good time making that. So go go check that out after this video. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.